Hey everyone, welcome back. It's so nice to see your faces in the middle of this pandemic. Today we're going to be talking about a really exciting feature called stencil layers. Now, if you have a bit of a VFX background and you've used render layers before, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So render layers and stencil layers are more or less the same thing. There are the two key differences here, but I'm going to go over that in this video. So the reason this is so exciting is because contrary to CryptoMat or Object ID, stencil layers actually support depth of field and motion blur right out of the box. So you get a perfect alpha mask right in the EXR file. And, and you get way more control over how you want to split your scene up, contrary to CryptoMat. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so now that we're in Unreal, I've got a very simple setup here. I'm using the Unreal Apartment scene. Very simple camera, nothing too fancy. So the purpose of this lesson is to jump into render layers and how we would set these up, okay? So... In this case, I'm going to want to separate both the foreground and the background. So everything that's on the table here is going to be one render layer, and everything that's in the background will be its own layer as well. So before we get started, I'm going to assume that you know how to use the movie render queue. If you don't know how, I suggest you go watch this video up here right above, because I don't want you to get lost, okay? So it, I'm going to be going a little bit fast if you've never used movie render queue before. So go check that video out so you know what I'm talking about before we get started. So moving on, let's go to the window tab up here. Go to Cinematics, Movie Render Queue. So I've opened the Movie Render Queue. I've already added my sequence. I'm going to go to the Settings tab here. Now, what you want to do, okay, to, and it starts setting up your render layers, is you're going to go to the Deferred Rendering tab. Click on this, and in, there's going to be a Stencil Clip Layers tab here, okay? You're going to want to click on the Stencil Layers and click on the little plus, okay? It adds Element, okay? So it's going to say None. Click on None, and you can sit, do Browse Layers. This brings up the Layers tab up in the top right-hand corner here. Once that's there, you're going to see there's nothing there. So you're going to right-click and create Empty Layer. And I'm going to call this layer Foreground. All right, so let's uh, hit Accept and close the Movie Render Queue. Now, I'm going to select everything in my scene that I want to be part of the foreground. Okay, so I'm going to collect like, these plants, like these, like this, the books, and this, I'm going to go up to the foreground, right click, click Add Selected Actors to Selected Layers. Click on this. Now, just to make sure that everything works, you can click the little toggle visibility here. Click the little eye. And you'll see, oh, whoopsie, I forgot the one of these plants here, here, and here. I'm going to add these to my selected layer. And, you know, just for good measure, I'm going to add this chair as well to my foreground layer. All right, so now... We've got my whole background here, and we've got the foreground layer here. Okay, so what we need to do next, let's go back to the movie render queue, go to cinematics, movie render queue, back to our settings, deferred rendering, and in the none layer here, click on foreground, the layer that we just created. Okay, now, it's also very important to have accumulator includes alpha checked right here. You may need to adjust one of your project settings. It's going to tell you, a message is going to pop up saying, like, hey, this project setting needs to be enabled. Make sure we go ahead and do that. Now, you may think that you need to go ahead and add another render layer for your background. Fortunately, you don't need to do this. So if you see here, it says add default layer, and you check this, what this does is everything that's not in a layer it's going to be rendered as its own thing, as its own layer. So let's like say, for example, in your background, you have hundreds of thousands of other objects. You don't need to select all of those and add those to a new background layer, okay? So just checking this, it understands that if something is not in a layer, it's going to be part of its own default layer. So very handy tip to know. So before we hit Except there's one more thing we need to add, okay? So we need to go to the setting tab up here and we need to add color output. Click on this. Now color output here, it may be minimized at first. Click on this and you want to click on disable tone curve, okay? So the reason for this is Epic states that if you don't disable the tone curve, you're going to have some black haloing or some black halos happening around the render layers in your mask, and your alpha is not going to come out right, okay? So it's very important to disable the tone curve. This means that your image will be rendered in linear sRGB space, which is great for compositing. You should be compositing in linear space to begin with. So once that's done, okay, I've already set up my console variable for subsampling. 
I've got my anti-aliasing temporal set sample count set to 8. Override anti-aliasing set to none. EXR 16-bit. It has to be EXR. It's not going to work if you just use PNG or JPEG or whatever. So make sure ESR sequence is checked with multi-layer. And the output tab, make sure that you have your output path set correctly. And once again, okay, going back to the deferred rendering tab here, make sure the accumulator includes alpha. Super important. Otherwise, your masks are not going to work. So a few caveats that you should know about here. So using stencil clip layers drastically increases your render times. Okay. So for each layer, for each extra layer that you have, it's going to increase your render time by 100% because it needs to render the entire scene for each individual layer. So in this case, we've got the foreground and we've got the default layer. So it's going to take already by default two times longer to render on top of which it takes even longer because you're including the alpha. This can increase, it says here, this adds 30% to the cost to the accumulation. So you should not enable it unless necessary. Okay. So it's going to take 30% longer because of the alpha and it's going to take 200% longer because you've got two render layers. All right. So now that all of this is set up, we can click the accept button. We're going to render local and we're going to send this over to Nuke. I'll be using Nuke, but you can probably use any compositing package of your choice. It can be Fusion or After Effects, whatever. So here are a few things that you are really good to know. These are the best practices when it comes to using the stencil layers. You should be assigning your desired actors to your layers. You should be adding the layers to the stencil layers in the deferred renderer tab. So selecting default layer checkbox will contain everything that is not in a specified layer. Each layer increases render time by 100%. You need to disable the tone curve in a color output tab because layers will not add together correctly in Nuke if the tone curve is applied. A black halo will appear around the edges and generally will not look very good at all. You also should ensure that you disable auto exposure in the post process volume. You should also disable screen percentage or set it to 100 because using a screen percentage resizing does not support passing the alpha channel through to your renders. So some of the pros of using a stencil layer include the scene remaining visually stable between many, many layers, okay? The main advantage here is that the stencil layer is a much better alternative to object IDs or cryptomat because it supports depth of field, motion blur, etc. Cryptomat or object ID do not support these things and you need to render out separate depth passes, motion vector passes, and assemble this in Nuke afterward. It's a lot of trouble and if you don't have Nuke, it's a real pain to work with. Another advantage is the alpha channel contains a mask of pixels that are actually written to a given layer, and you have much better control over what layers get written compared to object IDs, which have zero control. You can assign whatever actor or shape or object that you want to any given layer, whereas the object IDs, you have no control over what gets assigned to what. Now the cons, however, is that the render time increases with each additional layer. And if not possible to get an exact match to what you see in the engine, there is no perfect way to convert back to Unreal's look when you're working in post-production in Nuke or any other compositor. This has been stated by Epic time and time again. If it comes from them, I'm going to take their word for it. Okay, so we're in Nuke now, and I've already brought in my new render here that I just got from the movie Renicu. So the first thing you'll notice is the colors might seem off, and this is totally normal because we disabled the tone curve, which means we're getting a linear sRGB image. Okay, so, and you have the tendency of linearizing everything you bring into it. So don't be surprised if the, render, the colors look a bit different, that's fine. The first thing you want to do, we got our EXR file here. So we want to add two shuffle nodes next, okay? We need one shuffle node per render layer. So we're going to go shuffle, bring one here, and shuffle again bring the next one here. So I'll get double click my shovel layer here. Now I'm in my input layer. I'm going to select on RGB. I'm going to go to final image default layer. And here I'm going to click on final image foreground because the foreground is the render layer that we created. That's how I named it. So it'll be named whatever you named it in Unreal. Now to this click, so you'll see right away we've got render layer A and render layer B. So we got the foreground and we've got the background. We got nicely separated elements here. So if I could click the alpha, 
we got a perfect alpha for both of our renders. So this works fantastically. We can see right away, this is a great way of combining things together. Now, the next thing you wanna do is we're gonna create a merge node. Okay, so I'm gonna do foreground over background. And you'll see right now, this looks pretty good, but there's a major thing that you should know about. Unreal states that you need to be merging with plus and not over. So right now we, we set this to, by default is set to over and you'll see in theory, the result should look the same from the beauty pass. So here we've got a beauty pass and here we've got our merge node. So you'll see you've got this, this, we've got this odd haloing over the, basically over everything, around everything. This is because we're using over and not plus. So Epic clearly states you need to use plus. So we're gonna go ahead on my merge node. I'm going to click on this. I'm gonna set this to plus. Okay, and right away, now we're getting a better, much more similar result. Now, it's not perfect. It's not exactly the same. Toggling between the two, our beauty pass and our merge nodes. This is normal. Epic themselves have clearly stated in their live stream on Twitch that the results are never going to be a perfect match. Okay, so I'm putting a link to this Twitch stream in the description below. Um, this is where Epic clearly tells us that things are never going to be a perfect match, okay? So don't take it from me, take it from Epic. As always, when it comes to compositing and post-production with Unreal footage, it's always a compromise. It's it's not there yet. Um, there's it's Unreal still has a long way to go what, for, you know, proper compositing work, but they said themselves, sorry, Epic has said themselves that, you know, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. So as you can see, comparing again, it, it is, in fact, you know, not too bad, okay? And I'm pretty sure that an advanced compositor who's not me, I am an, by all means not a professional compositor, okay? I barely know my way around Nuke, but someone who's very good in Nuke or any, you know, a full-time compositor will probably know how to work with these alphas a lot better than I do. So, so one of the major advantages of using the merge node here is the following. So I'm going to just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to set this merge node back to over, okay? If you can deal with the black haloing around the edges, which to be honest, if I didn't know where to look, I probably wouldn't notice. If I hadn't if I didn't have the comparison with the original beauty path, uh it would probably be okay. And like I said earlier, an advanced compositor is probably going to know how to work around with this. Because I'm a dumbass when it comes to compositing work. I'm not very good. I know the basics, but I'm not going to pretend that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to compositing. So we're going to, just for just for fun here, I'm going to go add some text. So I've got some text here with Hello World written, and I'm going to go ahead and merge this, okay, with our background. Okay, so I got this overlaid on top of our background. I'm going to uh, move it around a bit. I'm going to move it like right here, let's say. And I'm going to merge this over this. And now you'll see this is one of the major advantages. You can go ahead and like sandwich some, some text or other elements bet between both of your render layers and you get a pretty nice alpha. So you can kind of see here the text, you get the perfect alpha cut out between the text. So if I wanted to add, you know, um, a person in there between the table and the back of the living room, I could do that. So this is just one of many reasons why I prefer using stencil layers over cryptomat. Because you have full control over how you can split your scene up. So once again, just moving this around and it's it's pretty nice to just have this really nice alpha, especially, you know, it, it kind of fades in nicely. It's, it's pretty good. It's not bad, right? So the stencil layers feature here really starts bringing Unreal one step closer to VFX territory. Some of the main things you should know when recombining these layers in Nuke is that you should color correct each individual layer by using the alpha channel as a mask for each color grade node. And when you're merging the layers, you really need to merge with plus or also known as add. Merging with plus will provide a much more accurate result, but the typical over A over B can be used in some cases if you know the result is acceptable. It is totally your call you have to use your creative judgment on this. So if I wanted to go ahead and grade the foreground separately, I'm gonna add another shuffle node. Okay, and I'm going to set this here. Set this to foreground. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and add a grade node right here for my foreground. So in the mask, I need to make sure that I connect my grade to the mask of my foreground layer here. And in mask here, so I'm gonna select final image foreground alpha. Now, in my grade node, I can go ahead and add a tint. You know, make this blue, uh, make my whole foreground layer blue, or, you know, orange, whatever. But we get a nice masking, right? So this is uh, how you would grade it. Because we're using a plus node and not over, or it's not a correct merge, it's not A over B, it's A plus B, um, you need to use masks on any of your grade nodes, okay? That's just something you should probably keep in mind. So using render layers is almost more powerful than using Unreal's new crypto mat because it supports the field, it supports motion blur, all those post-process effects will be rendered correctly in your render layer passes, okay? Whereas, whereas crypto mat or object IDs with the movie render queue will not support depth of field, they won't support motion blur or any other post-process effects like that. So you need to actually render out a death path, you need to render out motion vectors, and to get the cryptomat masks to deform correctly. Having render layers is also super beneficial because it allows you to actually choose what kind of ID you want. So you can choose, I want, if I wanted just the plant, just the plants to be in one layer, if I wanted just a flower pot to be in the render layer, you can do that, okay? So I'm gonna delete this because it's really ugly. But this is how you would go ahead and setting up your render layers in Unreal Engine. This is a very powerful new tool, super handy. It's not perfect. Epic themselves has clearly stated that it's not perfect. You're never going to get a perfect one-to-one -one match. But you know what? It's, it's a great start. It's something that I can work with. So guys, once again, I hope you've learned a little something. I hope this has helped you out. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions whatsoever. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week in the next video.